So in previous videos, we've been working on the water bottling facility. We started with this small little plant here, and then we decided to remove it because it wasn't going to meet the demand for the future projects. So we utilized this space and made it a lot bigger because we needed more trains, we needed more water, and of course we needed more room for future expansions. And then this past two weeks, I've been thinking, it's still not enough. Eventually, this will get bottlenecked with the amount of trains that are going to be coming up and down. The highway was unoptimized for the trains that are going to be passing. And that's why a week and a half ago, I needed to make some drastic changes. But also, if you remember in the previous video, I did state I will not be working on this in the future because I think we're fine. Well, I lied and I built this. So yeah, as you can see, some things have changed. We've got a whole new building, a whole new highway intersection or interchange, you can kind of say here. We've got multiple ways of trains to get down here now. We still have the main route. And yes, this is still the same blueprint. The only thing I've done is I've changed the hyper cannon, well, the hyper tube that was on the top. I've just replaced it with these pillars to kind of make it a bit more of a location of where you're going to expect a lot of train activity. The Obviously, there's a train going this way, obviously, left-hand drive, because that's the correct way. Put in the comments what you think is the right way. <laughs> I'm just baiting you. I'm just baiting you. But anyway, if you've, been, if you've enjoyed this video so far, uh, remember to like, subscribe, and also leave a comment, even if it's just a bloody emoji. But also, a quick plug, if you're interested in more of my content, I do release daily videos over on my More Bits channel. Link is in the description, and it's a channel basically on story, let's play, variety gaming, all that kind of stuff. You can see there's all quite a few videos, and we started it at the beginning of the month. And we are on a push to 1,000 subscribers now, so if you want to watch, you know, kind of long-form content, you want to sit back at the end of the day after you've put the kids to bed, got home from school or whatever, go over there and just chill out, grab some popcorn and wrap yourself up because it's a good, good vibe. But hopefully you enjoy this building. This side of the building is wide open because one, what's the point of decorating it if I'm going to be expanding from there? Um, so as you can see, I will probably bring it to this point here where these pillars are, which to be honest, I think this side is going to be done because I've recently just done this a couple of days ago on the live streams, which where you can see me build these live, by the way. If you've got any questions, go over there and uh, ask them away. Links are in the description. So I'm probably going to finish this off on live, in the live stream in the next couple of days. Uh, and then I want to start extending this, basically duplicating this building here 
into this location. And you must be wondering why I did this. Well, one, it was stupid of me to even think about putting it on the water level because that was taking up surface area for the water extractors to actually be. And if I do want to, you know, power my nuclear plant wherever we're building, what happened to my voice just then? Blah, blah, blah. Did a frog just come by my throat? <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, it's going to take up water uh, surface area. So if I was to do a nuclear build, you know, what's the point of having foundations at water level while I could be putting water extractors there and then sending the water up onto another level? It made no sense. But also with the other plant, the, the belts were getting a little messy. It was getting very untidy. I had no form of underflooring. Where in this base, you can see I've got quite a bit of space. We've organized the canisters to empty bottles. And yes, a lot of things are frozen right now. It's because recently in the live streams as well, I've just done a whole rebalance of the trains going to said locations and all that good stuff. So you can see a lot of belts under it. It's a lot more tidy than what it was. And if there is a little bit of a mess somewhere, at least you can hide it underground. The only thing I'm not liking, but it's pipe work, um, is the pipes over here are getting a little crazy, as you can tell. But this, who knows, might get changed and clean up in the future, depending on the lines, because the more lines I've added, the more room I've needed, and there's an auto safe. <laughs> well, Usually it takes around 20 seconds. It's not usually that long. Are you, are you done yet? No, there it is. Okay. So, yeah, we've got the pipes going down here, which go underneath the ground. And you can see it just kind of works up in kind of like segments. And that's going to kind of work the way how it has been all the way across here. Am I going to make it here in time? I think so. But, yeah, I didn't want to show you how I built this, how I did any of that. It was... No, because we're doing a lot of water bottling stuff, and it's I have a feeling we're going to be doing a lot on this series. It's just like you're going to see me popping it in. So why why you're popping it in bits is because I feel like I don't want to drag each episode out with water facility every single time. So just for viewing experience, I feel like it's just better just to pop it in here. I've just built this again, blah -de blah -de blah. And yes, I have been working on a uh, a blueprint which allows me to oh, bump bump do the packages so i will put this available at some point uh once i've fine adjusted it and uh more than likely when update 8 comes out and as we know that has kind of been internally delayed right now so this whole section here jesus watch out for the train uh is basically what's on the back side there so each layer there is basically just you know your water packages it makes it easier and we're going to be doing this over and over and over and over again so it might be worth just to do that but also with these junctions here, I have to start doing some overlaps and uh, some overroads and all this kind of stuff. The reason being is all these tracks, originally this one was not here. This one that goes over, it was actually coming down here. And then this one was initially turning into this outer layer over here. And what was causing problems with that is because the amount of traffic going down here, coming out of there... The problem being is whatever trains were coming down here, there was a lot of traffic just kind of sitting here. So there's a train sitting there when a t train was trying to turn out to go in that direction and so on and so forth. So you can kind of catch my drift, hence why we had to do an overpass. And it was the same with this one over here as well. It made no sense for the trains to come out here to go onto this line, which could cause a traffic problem with any trains coming down here. And they're waiting here for this train to turn into this line. Instead, just kind of, I took this alongside of it, so it's, this now turned into a three-track uh, highway, and then it goes over the inbound line. So this is the inbound line where trains go in, and that is the outbound line. And so far, it's working. And what I will be doing is these uh, sections, I will be doing on every single building that we go along. And it just makes it so much more easier now. We've got so much more floor space, well, water space to build what we need to for underflooring and water extractors. So let me go through which uh, stations are for what. So this over here um, is for the aluminium plant. This is the bottled water that is going over there. Yes, we are not bottling and bringing the empty packages on the tr same trains as what the, uh, the other ones are. This is because these were the first trains we started sciencing with, with the bot water bottles and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so this is uh, bottling the water. This one is bringing the empty packages, uh, empty canisters back from the aluminium plant. And then this one here is going over to the quartz where it delivers water and picks up the water canisters. And then this one over here is going to be the new one, which is going to go to the quartz factory as well. 
but this time this is going to be uh feeding the uh unpackages and that's going to go into refineries that's making me copper and the reason we need copper is because if we get ourselves a manufacturer, put that down, we are aiming for crystal oscillators. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be making this recipe, which is the standard recipe, which is quartz, which we have because we've been working out in the previous video. We have cable, which I'm going to use for the copper. And then we've got reinforced plates. And for reinforced plates, and we'll just quickly put our assembler down, we are going to be making the stitched iron plates. And the reason that is, is because wire one is going to be made from copper. Cable, we're going to need from copper. And we've got iron over in the uh, rocky desert as well. So the wire is going to get made. The cable is also going to get made. That is going to make into reinforced plates. We're going to make cable from the additional wire. And then all that goes into a manufacturer, which will make crystal oscillators. And the reason we need crystal oscillators is because we need radio control units. And that means aluminium casing, which we're already making. Computers, which we're already making. And crystal oscillators here as well. But technically, we're not making enough computers, and maybe that could be the next project I look into at making a bigger computer factory. Maybe one with crystal oscillators and circuit boards, because circuit boards require copper and plastic, or an alternate recipe, and crystal oscillators, we're going to be making them anyway. So maybe we can kill two birds with one stone, and uh, to be honest, I don't think about this on the live stream. So yeah, this video has been in the making for near enough uh, a month now. One, I took a week off for my birthday. Two, I come down with a severe throat infection. And then I've been kind of slowly working my way, getting this video ready for you. And uh, hence the reason we got all this done. We actually did majority of this on my birthday stream, which was at the beginning of the month. A lot of you have been wondering as well, is what we're going to be doing with this plant? Well, this, we're going to delete it at some point. That is because we are going to be going to the blended version. We're going to go to the blended uh, fuel. Uh, I want to eliminate all of this, eliminate all 69,000 megawatts, by the way, uh, and eliminate all of that and then bring in all the fuel from the Spire Coast. We're going to bring the oil from here and the excess oil that is over at the Blue Crater Lakes. And then we're going to make one giant plant here, which is going to focus on producing plastic. It's going to focus on producing some rubber and very much power. But I don't know if to keep that in the same place because technically we could extend the water plant around here as well. And I did see a few comments going, Bits, why are you packaging water all the way to the crystal quartz over there whilst you've got water right next to the plant? <laughs> Um, well, it seems that we have a little bit of an issue. And honestly, I don't know how this happened. And I'm going to guess the reason being is because I've been playing around with this junction and changing some things. So we've got a bit of a train collision. This was not set up. This was not staged. I can promise you that. But I don't know what actually caused it. I don't know if I had a train on the line here, but signals are on this, which is strange. So why would you collide if there's signals? unless technically I didn't put a signal here. So let's get these back up and running. So obviously you crashed there. Where did you crash? Oh, you crashed coming out of here. So yeah, it was an issue with that intersection. I just didn't put a signal there. Let's get that moving. I don't want to turn this one on just yet. Let's get a block signal here in a second. That pink train's about to pull out as well because all the trains are backing up just outside over there as well. So let's turn that one on. Then let's put a block signal there to help that. And then I don't think any of my trains are going to be turning out of here right now, are they? Look at this. This is crazy. So what I'm going to have... Oh, that train's moving up. Are you going to be able to push all the way out for this train to push in here? This is a word of warning. This is why you never play with a busy intersection uh, and delete stuff. Because I was adding on the live stream, I was adding this line in here, which is for this uh, plant here. So it does seem we have a bit of a problem. Uh, and it's to do with this train. Can I just quickly manually override this train here? Uh, turn off self-driving. Let's just push you up a little bit, which will pull that blue train out. Let's turn, stop this one. So that blue train is coming in. It should allow this blue train over to the left to move out as well. Okay, so that train's now moving out. And hopefully we can get back on track here. I do need to manually go over that. I'll probably do this off camera. Uh, well, off, off, off the video and make sure that all these trains are separated. So now that's done, which should allow that pink train to move. We're going to activate this train to go back into the platform. So that train's going to go off again. And now these two trains should now make the way in as well. Problem solved. But I do need to create the separation of all these trains. Otherwise, this could happen. Uh, 
more frequently. You should never really have trains. Well, he burns it right out there. Are you coming through now? Okay. Perfect. All right. We have movement again. Things are moving and doing its thing. So let me give you a bit of a rundown of what I've been doing here, uh, because it's basically the common thing that we've basically been doing, right? You don't need to know stuff that we've already built in the previous videos. This top floor is for the copper, which I talked about for the crystal otolids. It's not powered yet. The copper is not coming up here yet. Uh, and what's going to be happening is the copper that we're going to be grabbing, which is going to be going into these ref uh, refineries, is just above the water extractors, well, the water packages on the uh, the lower level. But the copper is coming from these two nodes here. And these are normal nodes, to, which are overclocked at 250%, which is making 300 parts per minute. So in total, 600 per line, which is going to go into a Mark V line. That's then going to go into the refineries. And if we look at this... Uh, we got uh, copper ore, which technically is 15. So if we would have done 600, which is the amount of copper, divided by 15 is 40. But what I've done, as you can tell, is I've overclocked this by 200%. So we need technically... Oh, I didn't put an E in there. Uh, so that means we now need 20 instead of 40. So which we've got 40 going down there. These all come in from this side, which they will, well, they will be, and then output down this line. But as we know, we're going to be outputting 75 per each one. So if we do uh, 75 times by 20, it's going to be 1,500. And if you do the maths, because we're using a Mark V belt, they can carry 780. So 750 per 10 refineries. So that's going to be 750 traveling down this line and 750 traveling down this line. This will then go into these constructors here. And if we look at the recipe here, which is going to be 15 copper ingots, 750 divided by 15, oh, 15 is going to be 50 constructors. And what I've done is I've put 25 on each of these lines. So 25 on this right side here, and then 25 on this side here. And that's going to be fed by that 750 line, which gets split at this splitter. So that means uh, half of them will go down that line, and then the rest of them will come down here and go down that line to feed that 25. And then 50 constructors, which will times by 30, should equal 1,500. So that will mean uh, 30 uh, times by 50 is going to be 1,500. And again, each 25 is going to be making 750 copper wire. So this output is making 750. This output is making 750. And that is exactly what's happening on this side as well, as this side is an exact duplicate of that side. It's just going to be using the other 750 ingots, which means we have four lines coming out in total, which is going to be 1,500 copper, uh, copper wire there and 1,500 copper wire there. And if you've not already guessed it by now, this 1,500 copper is going to go into constructors to make cable which will get consumed at 100%. So that's 1,500 going into copper, uh, which will make cable. And if we look at that, we go to cable, it's going to require 60 wire for 30 cable. So if we get 1,500 divided by 60, it's going to be 25 constructors. So we're going to do another line of 25 constructors going down this side, which will make the, uh, the additional uh, cable we're going to need for the crystal oscillators. And if we do 25, which is the constructors that's making cable, times that by uh, 30, oh, it's going to be 750 cable we're going to be making because cable is making at 30 per minute. And yes, as I stated before, the other wire is going to be get used for reinforced plates. Specifically, like I said, the stitched iron plates. And that's going to require 37.5 wire. And to be honest, I've not done this math yet because I've not done got to this point in the live stream, but we're going to do it in this video instead. So 37.5. So if we do uh, 1,500 divided by 37.5 is going to be 40 assemblers. So then 40 times 18.75, which is for the iron. So 40 times by 18.75 oh, 18 is 750, which means we need 750 plates per minute to make this a 100% efficient assembler. And then <laughs> 5.625 times by, how much was it? Uh, was it 40 machines, right? So 5.625, 5.625 times by 40 is going to be 225 reinforced plates per minute. And then just like we like to do, we're gonna pull out the manufacturer because this is gonna be making the crystal oscillators, 14 cables per minute, so if we do 750, which is we know the maximum, uh, divide by, was it 14? 14, yeah. Which was uh, 14 is going to be 53, yeah, 53 manufacturers. And the only reason I'm doing that is because 
we're making a lot more cable. We're making a lot less cable than the reinforced plates. Because uh, we're only making 750 cable, right? So that means we are going to need 53 manufacturers, which will make crystal oscillators, which will make 54 crystal oscillators per minute. Oh, I think I need a drink of water after that. Everybody breathe. Take a minute. <laughs> so let's remove these. And then what I want to do now is I want to start bringing the copper up and the water as well is going to be coming in from that train station over here, which you can already see the train is already coming in. You're not going to crash again now, are you? Because we've got we've got this here. You're going to stop there now. Beautiful. Okay. So this train station is bringing in the water uh, for basically this. And that means downstairs here, we're already starting to unpackage it and uh, turn it into, well, water. Uh, we just now need to put the empty canisters, well, the empty canisters, sorry, the uh, buffers along here into this building again and then divert the water upstairs into them refineries right so it's just occurred to me what i'm going to do is the rest of this video i'm going to make it into a part two which will come out later this week because i feel like you guys deserve more of a build video like we used to rather than a descriptive video or a, 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 like an update video uh, obviously because i was off with my illness and birthday and all that kind of stuff i am strapped for time right now on catch up so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create this into a second video which i'll release later this week where we'll make the oscillators the reinforced plates the iron, the copper, all that kind of stuff. And I'll give you more of an in-depth uh, build kind of guide on what we're going to be doing with all of that. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully you understand the reason I've got to do a part two. Uh, and I will see you all in another video. So as always, keep smiling and I'll see you then.